Dear EPE211 participants, welcome to the LearnLine site. First of all, I'd like to point out that uh, we have an on-campus group. So if you're studying on campus or if uh, you can come on campus, then please, you are welcome on Wednesdays between 9 and 10. If not, uh, then your collaborate session is organized for 6.15 on Thursday, which will be tomorrow, based on this video. All right. The purpose of this video is to look at assignment one, which is the only assignment. So that's what we are looking at right now. So what we need to understand is that this unit is for planning for learning and assessment. All right. So the focus is planning for learning and assessing. Okay, so when we are going to do our, our review of the documents, please try to select a document that focuses on an assessment that you've designed or an assessment policy or document that you have come across. Scrolling down, you will see that the set texts are here, recommended texts are here, and you can see that if you click on these links, the textbook should appear. All right, and these textbooks are highly recommended and I will explain why in a few minutes in this video. So the next thing is assignment information. What's important here for us is the date. It's Sunday, the 5th of April, All right? So that's roughly one month away, less than one month away. Uh, this is week two. All right, so it's about three weeks left before the due date. And so this is what it, I'm making this video here is that we to establish an understanding of what the task require. It's 1500 words. Please keep in mind it's 50% of your grades. It's a pass ungraded. So uh, please complete it to the best of your ability uh, and um, everything should be good. Okay. So, written critical analysis of a planning document, prefer preferably one of your own. Okay, the purpose is for you to reflect on your past uh, placement experiences and past placement documents that you may have seen or you may have produced for your teaching. The purpose is to improve the quality of any of your documents that you use on placement, whether it be a lesson plan, a unit of work, or an assessment item. All right. So preferably your own lesson or unit of work. But as I have pointed out, it's also part of assessing. So we need to keep this in mind. Okay. If we look back here, choose a programming and or planning document that incorporates that incorporates requirements or policy for learning design, including assessment and reporting. Okay. So we need or I need to see if you're using a lesson plan or a unit of work, I need to see that the lesson plan leads to an assessment task and that assessment task is set within the recommendation from the literature. All right. Anyone can design an assessment piece as an opinion, but I'm not after an opinion. I'm after a convincing document that demonstrates your ability to design a logical and well-structured, based on recommendation from the literature, assessment item. So let's go back for a minute to the unit information, all right, that you can retrieve from LearnLine. And you will see that Brady and Kennedy is actually, if I go back and have a look at it, Brady and Kennedy is actually celebrating students' achievement assessment and reporting. So obviously, you would need to be reading this document. Next, uh, a book, a very uh, highly recommended and suggested book, is 
Clark and Peterway, uh, Marsh becoming a teacher, and it is also here. So obviously, as you formulate and write your critical analysis of your document, you would be making references to these documents, these two textbooks, or any other literature that you think is better suited for your understanding of how to write an assessment piece and how to write um, lesson plans or unit of work. Okay, there's quite a variety of books for you to access, but obviously Clark Peterway and Brady and Kennedy are recommended. Uh, I recommend that you include them in there because obviously they will be very useful. All right, so explicitly, explicitly is a very st strong indicative word of the quality that I'm after. Okay, I understand it's just a pass ungraded, but your work will benefit you and the more explicit and concise, obviously it is, the better for you it will be in the long term. Explicitly describe and justify, including references. So if you're justifying something, obviously you're referring to either an experience or the literature to support your opinion. Remember, I'm not after an opinion. Program evaluation process you have used in this assignment. Okay, so again, we're referring to assignments. So don't just critique your lesson plan or your unit of work, but critiquing how the assessment fits in with the unit of work uh, and how you have implemented it or integrated it in your unit of work and lesson plan. Right, you'll want uh, you'll want to use some kind of terminologies that are um, that are uh, included in the literature. Okay, I'm keeping this a little bit vague because I want you to think about it. I don't want to provide you with all of the answers. Okay, so identify the key learning design features, and we'll refer to the literature for that in a few minutes. And the relationship with curriculum and assessment requirements. This is also very important because uh, we need to understand how the assessment aligns with the curriculum. Uh, and appropriate feedback. So here you would just give me a timeline of, okay, the students are doing these three uh, lessons. Okay, they'll participate in these three lessons. I'm going to have this type of assessment at the beginning and I'm going to have this type of assessment at the end. The two assessments align with each other and they measure the same thing and at the end I can make a very informed, evidence-based kind of decision on the student's learning. Okay, critique the learning design features. Now here, what you're looking at is again you're re uh, referencing the literature because what you, the point is to engage you in a reflection of your document and to try to understand where you can improve certain aspects of your lesson design so that it improves um, teaching and learning. Okay. And here again, particularly the assessment requirements, remember why you are assessing. All right. So you may have your learning design, but why are you assessing and what's the point of it? Okay. Uh, the contextual issue, obviously, here um, in today's on campus um, session. Uh, one of the questions was like, what grade do you want to read and, and, and what uh, topic or what subject? This is top, totally up to you. It's your choice. All right. If we go back to the top, it's preferably one of your own lessons or unit of work or assessment document. So uh, the context will be something that you've been uh, involved in. Okay. Finally, very importantly, is the last line, it must be professionally presented and apply the academic standard of including APA style referencing. Obviously, if you're going to use Brady and Kennedy and Clark and Peterway, you will use APA style referencing to uh, cite the textbooks and reference them at the end. Please go on the library website page where you can find a link 
to how to do APA referencing if you're not familiar with it. So briefly, uh, to give you an idea, uh, Brady and Kennedy chapter one. All right. So Brady and Kennedy is about uh, celebrating students' achievement, assessment, and reporting. So in the document it says chapter one, and you have eight and nine here. So let's look at chapter one: context for assessment and reporting. Now you can already see here in the in the first chapter, right, in the introductory page of the first chapter, that there are learning objectives. Okay. So obviously your lesson plan and your unit of work will have learning objectives and um, your assessment will fit within these objectives. Briefly, I will look at this, excuse me. So here the first line that we see here is the reason why we have assessment and also why we have documentation is that the learning progress and reporting makes the results available to a variety of audiences okay and in general they're called the stakeholders so this is why we need to be very thorough in the process of assessing and reporting if we move forward in chapter one we'll see here that everyone everyone has a stake in the outcomes of schooling student parents businesses industry government and society all right and so this is why assessing and reporting is quite important is because everybody wants to have an input in the outcome of assessment and reporting so this is how we can determine or how society can determine whether students are prepared for a 21st century global working environment all right so that's how we look at it and that's how we need all of the information to guide us so let's go back to the beginning uh, here we have high stakes assessments national plan but here we have issues for assessing that uh, Brady and Kennedy mentioned validity, reliability, summative assessment, informative assessment you should be aware of, a portfolio of assessment. So there's a difference between these three and how can we, uh, how do we understand them and how do we apply them in the lesson or in the activities. Authentic assessment is quite uh, an important term because we want to assess the students as if in a real world environment. We don't really want to assess the students for the sake of assessing them. Performance based, alternative, standardized test, and the first one, which is norm reference assessment, which would be more summative. All right. So, Bradley and Kennedy will introduce us and continue to explain the process of assessing. However, now uh, I will review that later, but for now I'm going to go to Marsh is Becoming a Teacher uh, by Clark and Peter Way. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm very sorry that the actual link doesn't work. So it might mean that a lot of people are accessing this book online and that the license is oversubscribed. Uh, please, if you need to access the book online, please continue to ch uh, check that it's available. Uh, and I will check with the library as to why uh, this is not acceptable, accessible online. But uh, in this particular book, um, we need to look at assessment and reporting, which is chapter 17. And you will see that in your um, Clark and Peter Way chapter 9, which we've covered to some extent and Clark and Peter Way chapter 17 which is in module 2 approaches to assessing learner development and learning design okay so it's there and we need to be familiar with the content All right so this basically summarizes and explain um, your assignment what to look for what to search for 
Remember, you have been on placements, you may have produced assessment pieces. If you haven't used assessment pieces, but uh, your mentor teacher may have provided you with an, ass an assessment item that they have produced, you can uh, use it, but please reference the fact that that assessment is from your mentor teacher. Um, give them credit where the credit is due. And um, critique it. Okay. And to finish, I would like to say please also read the rubric because we don't want to be insufficient evidence. We don't want to be in this area at all. Um, we want to be towards quality evidence. And here are the words again explicitly justified within the reference. Okay. Effectively comprehensible. Uh, but also what I added in the on-campus lesson today is that I use the term convincing. Okay, If you refer to the reference or the literature, uh, it will be convincing that this is not an opinion, but actually it is an educated and informed decision that you've made. All right, so please keep this in, in mind. Read the rubric and... I look forward to reading your assignments. If you have any questions or if anything's unclear or you need further information, please contact me by email or come to the on campus lesson. If not possible, then obviously say, uh, ask some questions on the discussion board and I will respond as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and again, have a great day.